Well, that is the Auburn Symphony, folks. And it's uh, Kowalewski, but it's, I'm telling you, they are fantastic. It is one of the finest symphonies in Northern California, maybe all across the state. Uh, we're so proud of the Auburn Symphony. Really, really, really are. Uh, and, and the whole idea is that you have the opportunity to see and experience the Auburn Symphony. Why? Well, because of the talent and the dedication of its members under the baton of Maestro Peter Jaffe. Now, you can see them at their best May the 19th at the Mondavi Center in Davis, and that from uh, symphonies, uh, the symphony's executive director, Ann Brown. Also with us today is Maestro Peter Jaffe. Peter, nice to have you with us on the show today. Well, it's great to be along. Thanks so much for inviting me. Oh, and, absolutely. And, and welcome, and, everybody out there in Radio Land. Oh, absolutely. And you know what? you got to tell them. Tell them what the program is going to be like, because they will be astounded, especially with you guys over at the Mondavi Center, which is fantastic. Well, it's a, it's a wonderful venue, and, and this is part of a great tradition that was established by my wonderful predecessor, Maestro Michael Goodwin, who first started the tradition of us trekking down the hill to the Mondavi Center at Davis, and we've kept it up ever since because the acoustics are wonderful and people love making the, the trek there. It's like a special party every year. It is. So, but, so just as you said, this is happening on Sunday, May 19th. It's a matinee show. And we're starting the program with a piece by Tchaikovsky called March Slav, mm. which, which has sort of the overriding emotional theme of victory over oppression. Uh, one of the pieces that I view as almost sort of a companion piece to that is what we all know, his 1812 overture, which is so famous for representing victory over oppression that even though Tchaikovsky wasn't an American composer, you hear it every year on July 4th concerts all you around betcha. <laughs> the, the nation. Well, it, even some of the same themes that are in the 1812 overture appear in this Tchaikovsky march as well. And it's a, it's a very compact and very stirring, inspirational piece, and so we're just really looking forward to having that be our great curtain raiser opening up the program. And then one of my favorites, Beethoven. Well, yes. The next piece is the Beethoven, quote, Emperor Concerto. It's his fifth and last piano concerto. The soloist, Alain Goldstein, is really an internationally known figure, and I just happen to be so lucky that he's a friend of mine. Oh, that's but, but, but he's played around the world. He's played with Zubin Mehta. He's played with Herbert Blomstedt. He's recorded albums that are released internationally, and now, you know he really tours all around the world, and he's just a fantastic pianist, and it's so great to have him playing with us. And then, of course, we have an intermission, and then, woohoo! more of the best. Well, Respighi's Pines of Rome, uh, if you think Cecil B. the Mill, but, but put it in a symphony rather than a movie, <laughs> that's kind of what it is. I mean, it's got everything in it. It's, it's, it's one of the most colorfully orchestrated pieces ever in the universe, and it has one of the most grandiose climaxes in the entire repertoire. And it's got really a great set of bells and whistles. Mm. At, at, at one point, our principal trumpet player, Victor Peterzak, you'll see him leave the stage and go backstage and, and play this really sweet uh, melody from, from sort of behind the baffles, and then he comes back on stage. But there are also people stationed in the hall yeah, that are I love off stage it. <laughs> brass players. And we've got um, nightingale sounds that are going to be broadcast in the hall at one point. And there's Who, going to be an organ. How, how, do you, how do you produce that? Uh, well, it, a long time ago, okay. you know, like a, a, almost a century ago, not quite, when, when the first p uh, piece came out, it even says in the score that there should be a gramophone player. And so oh. there used to be like a, you know, a, a piece of vinyl. A, a, you know, or an actual vinyl recording that would come with the set of rental parts that had recordings of nightingale sounds. Huh. And then when we move into the digital age, uh, now what you can get is they'll send you digital files of, of nightingales. And so we've got our percussionist, Ryan Goodpaster, has got a special media player, and so he knows exactly when to fade in the birds and play them and everything like that, and they'll be hooked into the house sound system. So nice. it, it's, it's going to be a magical effect. And so this is really... A stellar blockbuster program. You just gotta be there to 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 hear this thing. Just overwhelm you in the audience. Well, Maestro, it, it's kind of amazing because I call it surround sound. 
uh, because it's, well, you feel true. like it's coming from every place. Exactly, and and I think you know, hearing the description I've just made about the pines, I mean that's more so than ever because it's not just coming from the stage; it really is going to be coming from all around. Mm-hmm. And and it's it's that seamless kind of surround sound. It's not just a collage of a speaker and back and forth. And it you know it's it's all acoustically produced, except for the nightingales, of course. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> nice. But, but uh, you know it just really does surround you. And and there's even an organ on the stage. I mean you know this really? thing has got oh yeah it's it's the most glorified kitchen sink piece you can imagine. <laughs> just er- everything in the world is in this piece, and it's just extremely inspirational and stirring to listen to. You know, I was telling everybody earlier when we first went on the air, I said, you know, you can make it a Mother's Day, you know, Mother's Day, Day, which is coming this Sunday, you know, take Mom out, brunch and everything, and then say, Mom, I got a big surprise for you, because we're going to have a progressive Mother's Day. Next Sunday, we're going to go to the Mandavi Center and hear the Auburn Symphony. What do you think? I, I think that's fantastic. I think that's great. Now, I, I want to add in a little thing if we've got just a few seconds Yeah, left. go ahead. For today, you, as long as you want. Today is May 7, right? Yes. May 7 is an incredible day for birthdays because what? we mentioned the fact that at the top of the show in Mondavi, we're playing a piece by Tchaikovsky, right? Yeah. Well, t- today is Tchaikovsky's birthday. Are you serious? I'm serious. Today, May 7th, is Tchaikovsky's birthday, Aww. and it also happens to be the birthday of another famous symphonic composer, Johannes Brahms, who was also born on May 7th. Really? But even more important than either of those people, somebody very close to me was born on May 7th, and that's my wife. Oh, bless Aww. her heart. <laughs> What's her Happy name? Happy birthday to Jane. Her name is Jane. Jane? Jane? Jane. Oh, Jane. Mar- tell her, please, happy birthday. We're thinking about her and wishing her the best. Will. So what are you going to do special for your wife today? Oh, well, that's a secret. Oh, God. <laughs> you are going to do something she, special, though, right? In the background, she can't find out. Right? Oh, okay. <laughs> I love it. And we have Anne with us in studio. I'm sorry. We're not, we're not ignoring you, Anne. No, we really I know. are. It's fine. But he's got it's such fine. great stuff. So how, when you put these kind of things together, we want to make sure that people can get tickets and, and how do they get over there, that kind of thing. Right. So at this point, um, you, there's still plenty of great seats available, but you need to order them through the Mondavi Center. So you can do that in two ways. You can go to mondaviarts.org, okay. or you can call them directly at 530-754-2787. Terrific. And, you know, arrange to get your tickets at will call. Um, there's also a bus available from Auburn. Oh, so yeah. So if you're not able to drive yourself, but you want to go, give our office a call, and we can... Uh, Hopefully make arrangements to get you on our bus. It leaves from the Auburn Library nice. right here in town. Trip down, trip back, $26 total for the round trip. Are you kidding? That's no. excellent. Yeah, it's normally $10 to park down there. So, you you know, it's a pretty good deal for the bus ride. So just let us know. You we betcha. Help you get and, there. And Maestro, please to explain to people because, you know, they don't believe me. I mean, I, I, yeah, I'm a singer and all that kind of thing. But yeah. they don't understand. The Mandabi Center, the sound in there is incredible. It really is. And, and, and the acoustics are, are only one part of the equation, but something that always keeps me going, that, that makes me just love my job, is that you really can't duplicate live performance. That's true. Um, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm dating myself here, but I, I remember back in the 60s when the, when the Moog synthesizer came out and people <laughs> were predicting that electronic music was going to supplant human performance. And, and it didn't happen, you know, thank no. heavens. No. And I think one of the reasons, uh, well, there are a couple of reasons and why live performance, I think, continues to be really exciting. And one of them is the concept of synergy that, that, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Yep. And, and this is something beautifully personified by a symphony orchestra when you, you can see, you can hear, you can practically taste the experience of all these souls melding their talents together and coming up with this supreme final result, which is indeed greater than any single person could achieve. And that is something that you just don't get by listening to a recording. You know, no. it, it, it's, it's the real life experience that captures that. And it's the emotion of the people you're sitting with. Exactly, and, because it's not only the live 
performance coming from the stage, but just as you said, even being part of the audience is kind of a communal event. It is. You know, like everybody's sharing in the experience and listening together. And so that's, that's something amazing. And the other thing that's amazing, I think, is that people all of a sudden are confronted. You can't escape it with the craft that has to be produced by the musicians you on bet. the spot. Mm-hmm. No and, do-overs, and no don't, edits. And you guys feed from the audience, too. That emotion feeds yeah. right back to them. Yeah. But, but I mean, the, 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 the standard to which we're held is extremely high. Well, that's because of you. Well, <laughs> I'm part of it, but it's a team effort. But, but, you know, suppose you're a baseball player, right? Yeah. You know, if you're batting 300, that's pretty good, right? Yeah. But that means that no matter what, for whatever reason, 75, sorry, 70% of the time you're not connecting with the ball. Whereas, you know, imagine if we only got 30% of the notes right, you know, nobody would ever show up to our concert. Yeah, the, the standard that we hold ourselves to in a symphony is pretty close to 100%. Yeah. You know? and, and so seeing people perform live like that, you say, oh, my goodness, they can't do that over. They really are doing it live on the spot. That's their craft. And that's something also that I think is amazing about live performance. Yep, you got one chance at it. <laughs> that's yeah, it. Yeah, you that's got, a you got to be your yeah. art. Yeah. Now, i got to ask you real quick, because I, I don't want to run out of time here, but how did you get involved? I mean, what drew you to be a conductor? In 30 seconds or less? A- absolutely. Okay. Well, you know, it's radio. What can I say? I, I, I fell in love from the inside out. I grew up playing in orchestras as a violinist. Mm-hmm. I, I played in youth orchestras, and then later, fast-forwarding to my undergraduate years, I had the enormous experience of getting to play at Tanglewood under Leonard Bernstein and Sergio Zawa. How and cool is Klaus that? Klaus Tenstedt and Gunther Schuller and Andre Previn, and, you know, you name it, a lot of the world's most... And amazing conductors. At that time, Bernstein was still very much in his prime. And so, you know, I, I love the experience, but I always sort of wanted more. I always tried to go home on the piano and duplicate everything I heard. And the mm. idea of having an enormous group of talented people help make music all together just really inspired me. So I kind of fell in love from the inside out in the profession. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, and you know what? I knew I liked you especially because you were a violinist. I was a violinist through high school until I went to Indiana University, and then st- I was an opera major there. Oh, so- that's terrific. Well, you know, they always say it, what's really interesting is that when, whenever you're taking violin lessons, your teachers encourage you to sound like you're singing. Yes. It goes both ways. I have a friend who's a tenor who said that Pavarotti used to tell people, imagine le- that you're playing the violin. Uh, you, because you're making them, you're making the notes. It's not; they're not yeah. just there for you. <laughs> That's yeah. for sure. Well, Maestro, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. I know you're busy, busy, so I appreciate it, and I hope you'll come back and visit again. We can talk more. Well, thank you so much, and and we love what you do, and thanks so much for doing it. You betcha, and I'm I've got my tickets, so I'll see you on Sunday, uh, next okay. Sunday, a week from Sunday. <laughs> Take well, care. On the nineteenth. Yeah. yeah. And, of course, that's Maestro Peter Jaffe. And what he is such an incredible personality, Anne. He really is. We're so fortunate to have him with us. I mean, just listening to him, you you get it. You know what I love about him, too, during the performance? He talks to the audience, and he kind of brings us into it and explains things. And I, I think that's marvelous. Yes, he does that. That's an important part of what he does as a conductor, and he knows how critical it is to make that connection and to really pull everyone in. It really makes a big difference. We get so many comments from patrons about that in particular. Absolutely. So we, a week from Sunday, the 19th, Mandavi Center. Don't miss it. And tickets can be gotten at? MandaviArts.org or call the Mandavi box office at 530-754-2787. And if you have any questions at all, call the Auburn Symphony office at 530-823-6683.